All right, so first thing I'll talk about is staffing. Um, the good news is uh, we have searched uh, for many months, uh, I guess since the middle of the summer, I had the green light to, to uh, rehire servers. And it was a slow process. You know, the first one I hired was uh, Anna Lee, and then we, uh, Anna Lee was second, we had Madeline was the first one, and then recently we hired Freddie. So Fred, Frederick Harris is our newest server. He's doing a wonderful job. I've also been, um, been given permission to hire a cook, which we've been, we've been recruiting for that for many months. And right before Christmas, we hired Keith Maynard. So he joined our culinary team and has been doing a wonderful job. Matter of fact, he prepared today's key lime pie with, a, uh, with Chef Larry watching him closely. So uh, we're real thrilled to have Keith with us. I think he, he might be approaching his second or third week. I think this is his third week now with us. So he's doing a terrific job. Um, also, December was a good month as far as announcements because I was given permission to start rehiring several other positions. I was given permission to rehire for the dining tech position, which those are the people that work in the health center. Um, and so that was one full-time and two part-time people that I've been recruiting for. Uh, I've also been recruiting for dishwashers. I've been recruiting for one full and three part-timers. And I've been recruiting for a dining room supervisor. And I think that's, that's it for now. So as you all know, you know, Shirley has since moved on in November. Um, Kristen has stepped up and has taken additional responsibilities in the supervisory role. And we've had some discussions and uh, we have informally, we, informally I could say, we are planning to move Celia Vaughn into the supervisor position. So the only reason why she's not formally been given, offered the position and put into the role yet is we're when we recruit enough people to replace her for her current positions and her current responsibilities, then she'll move into a greater capacity. Uh, I don't think any resident has said anything that's not complimentary about Cecilia. She does a wonderful job. She is a person that works in the health center, rapid recovery, and the main dining room. So very, very well versed. She's a uh, quick learner, think on your feet kind of person, beautiful smile, great demeanor. I think she's gonna do great. And she also has some uh, supervisory experience from her previous positions when she worked at St. Vincent's Hospital. She was there for, I think, uh, 11 years, is it, Kathy? So, yeah, we're, we're very fortunate. As a matter of fact, she and Shirley worked together at St. Vincent's Hospital. Um, so we're in the process, uh, I talked about recruiting, now I'll talk about actual hiring. So at the moment I have a full-time and a part-time dishwasher that are, have been interviewed, screened, and are in the process of being hired. If all goes well, on Monday I'll see the whites of their eyes. And then we're also, we've made an offer to a dining tech, which again, those are the people who work in the health center and or assisted living. I've got a full-time person that's been screened and is in the hiring process now, who hopefully will start on Monday as well. So, I've uh, been super busy in the recruiting mode. It takes a ton of time to go through resumes and applications, set up interviews. There's, you know, probably 80% of the people I set up for interviews don't show up. So, going through the process of screening and then it's all for nothing. It's really frustrating. So when I get somebody that's that's really good and they're going, you know, doing everything right, going through all the right steps, it's very exciting. All right. So one thing I wanted to mention is, you know, if hopefully uh, there'll be a lot of folks watching this presentation on my W Live since I don't have a huge crowd in here, with dining room reservation uh, practices. You know, we've always, you know, from the start, we've asked everybody to um, make your reservations at least 24 hours in advance, 24 to 48 hours in advance. This allows us time to uh, get the information 
you know, from the emails that we receive. So it's, um, you can only imagine with over 100 emails coming in a day, it's hard to keep track of them on day of kind of timing. Uh, there's been a handful of folks and, and the number has been growing of people who've been calling in for the same, you know, same day for the same meal. And, you know, and then when the food doesn't come, then they're getting very upset with us. And it's not fair to us because you know, we're not equipped to do the business like that. So if you all could please share this information with your friends, we'd appreciate that very much. Um, I want to talk about monthly specials. So we've been doing, you know, we, we did different specials in December and now January we're getting back into our regular routine. Uh, for those that were in the dining room uh, the other day when we had Rubens, pretty good, wonderful. So I know the Rubens are something that we used to do on a uh, regular basis, you know, before COVID hit. So we're going to get back into the basis of doing that in the main dining room again as well, probably at least once a month. Um, and I might start alternating Rubens maybe with a, another specialty sandwich. And when I do the Rubens, it's been a, a third entree for the day just to make it that much more special. But since this is, you know, a cook to order kind of item, it's only for those that come to the dining room. Um, steak night, when we did that in November, went over really, really well. So we're going to do steak night once a month starting in, you know, this month. We have it scheduled for January 20th right now. And we'll continue steak night on a, on a regular basis once a month. It is a double fob, so it will cost you, you know, the equivalent of two meals. Uh, we're going to do continue with breakfast specials. We have a breakfast special planned right now for January 28th. Uh, it's, omelets cooked to order is going to be the main feature. And again, we do try to do the breakfast specials at, towards the end of the month to help out with folks that are looking for ways to use up, you know, unspent meal credits. Um, let's see. With uh, another, another topic I wanted to touch on was um, with, regarding deliveries and regarding what, what constitutes a meal. So even before COVID, we've always had a four box limit. And so to keep life simple, you know, you have a large box for your entree, vegetable, and starch. You have a container for your soup. You have a container for your salad, for your dessert, and another container for your salad of choice. So a salad of choice could be fruit. It could be the JC salad. It could be the Caesar salad or the salad of the day. But it's not four salads. It's a salad of choice. So if you just think of it as four boxes, if you'd like to have two salads, that's fine but you'll be sacrificing dessert. Just keep in mind, four boxes, plus a roll, plus a beverage. So, does that, is that simple enough? Mr. and Mrs. Dowd, does that, does that um, sim simplicity hold water? Okay, just, I'm, I'm not putting you on the spot, I just want to make sure, um, you know, because I've presented this you know, so many times over, you know, through the years, and it's just, it, it becomes frustrating to both of us, you know, for us as the food preparers um, and for the recipients, you know, I don't want recipients to feel, you know, that, you know, we've missed something. So we just try to keep it simple. So that's what we're trying to do, my friends. Um, also, on January 13th, uh, I guess that's next week. Chef Bill is going to be doing another one of his special cooking demos. It's a full meal being prepared in front of you, um, something very nice and elegant. He's going to do something with a uh, kind of a New Orleans theme to it. I'm not sure what he's doing yet, but I know he's got something very nice planned. And, you know, this is a, uh, for a more intimate group. We can only take uh, 10 people in the gathering place for these meals when we're doing them. Uh, let's see, what else can I share with you? All right, so the, the other big thing is that on January 17th, we're going to be rolling out the next, uh, the winter new menu. This was, um, I, I have to apologize, usually when 
you know, aside from the holiday season getting in the way, uh, when I have time, we do the, uh, we'll do a new menu sampling, typically a week or so prior to the rollout of the new menu. So on this time around, because of time constraints, we're going to do a new menu sampling on the first or the second day of the new menu. So January 18th, which is a Monday, everything that's going to be featured on the menu that day will be examples of new recipes that we're using on this four-week cycle. Um, we're still reviewing some of the weeks, but I'll share with you a few of the new items that we have that's going to be on this menu. We have a, on, we have a cucumber, tomato, and a horseradish with cream, uh, with, let me start over. Cucumber, tomato salad with horseradish sour cream, uh, cabbage and smoked sausage soup, red velvet cupcakes, uh, andouille stuffed portobello mushrooms, uh, sun-dried tomatoes, spinach frittata, there's a, a balsamic bacon Brussels sprout, uh, Flemish beef stew, tortellini with meat sauce, um, carrots with ginger honey butter, uh, mini cob salad, roasted mojo chicken, uh, Italian veal with peppers, pork schnitzel with Munster and Dijon cream, roasted Greek potato wedges. So those are just a few examples of some of the new items that we're going to be featuring. Um, comments from December. Um, the number of comments, the total volume has been, um, it's actually for, for several months, it's kind of been slipping down. The number of uh, comments that people you know, send to us electronically. However, the comments that we have been receiving have been very favorable. Um, our numbers have uh, climbed up in December. Uh, from November, uh, the average was around 86.5%. And for December, the average was 96% across the board for the five categories. Uh, so we appreciate that tremendously. And I'll just share some of the written comments that we received. I won't go into all of them. There's, there was about um, 54 comments that we received for the month of December. Um, there was probably about a half dozen for the filet mignon dinner. And I'll just read one. It said the filet dinner was excellent. My dad was in the meat business, so I grew up on top quality steak. Thanks for having both kinds of peppermint ice cream. Keep both in the freezer for backups, please. Um, JC salad used to be a fallback for me. Now it is inedible. My dad fed this type of vegetation to pigs and cows. So I can assure you we're not feeding anything that's pig worthy. But um, what we did experiment with for a while was having the mixed baby greens, which in fine restaurants, that's what you pay extra for. Uh, it obviously was not very well appreciated here, so we, we have gone back to romaine. Philly cheesesteak was exceptionally tasty today. Terrific eggs benedict, uh, one of the best ever in my breakfast experience. Uh, we enjoyed uh, the takeout orders. They were delicious. They were the best in town. Uh, can we have hamburgers and hot dogs on the lunch menu? Um, which that is another change that I've, I've made because we've always had uh, hamburger night on Sunday evenings, but I've had some requests. So starting on this new menu cycle, we're going to take it off of the evening menu and do it on the lunch menu. Uh, the service that Sienna and Freddie gave was excellent. We're blessed to have such caring and competent staff. Uh, sorry, as I usually have good things to say, but not tonight. The eggplant soup was great, tasted good, had nice creamy texture. Hope to see it again. Uh, thank you for the exceptional Christmas dinner. The ham was tender and delicious. And chicken livers were outstanding. Rice was well done. Turkey was tasty. JC salad was fresh and crisp. So anyhow, there's a lot of very positive comments on here. I would like to bore you with them for a while, but I won't. Uh, let's see what else. So coming up, we have our Valentine's dinner planned for Valentine's night, which is going to be on a Sunday. 
Uh, we have a Fat Tuesday breakfast special coming up on February 16th. Uh, aside from that, um, I'll ask you all any questions that you have for me. That's the answer. On now? Yes. yes. Staffing. You, you talked about, uh, first of all, how many people are you, how many individuals are you looking for right now? And how long have you been looking for them? Not the ones you've just hired, but how many additional people are you authorized to hire and for how long have you been looking for those? So I was. In the summertime, I was given permission to hire a cook and three servers, which we hired the servers fairly quickly. The cook took a long time, I think probably four plus months of I recruiting. That. Um, and then on December 7th is when they opened up the gate for me to hire uh, or to replace um, Shirley as a supervisor and to hire one full-time uh, dining tech and two part-times, one full-time dishwasher, and three part-times. Yeah. Are any of those filled at the moment? Uh, as I was saying, that we've got a, uh, technically no, but I've got three in the process of being hired. Okay. Now, so, the supervisor, is that Kristen that's moved up to Shirley's position? Yes, Kristen temporarily did that. Um, she is not interested in, in working exclusively evening shifts. So in the short run, she has accepted additional responsibility. Okay. Um, when, the, when Celia moves into the position full-time, then uh, Kristen moves back to her previous role, which was part supervisor, part server. Okay. And this, this, you know, just so you know, this was amicable. Uh, the, the offer was on the table, or the opportunity was there for her. Okay. I don't want you to feel that it's not a slight. It was, it, the right. fact that she doesn't take it wasn't because she wasn't doing a good job. She's right. been doing a fantastic job. Right. Would you say you're at full, once you hire these last, whatever, two or three people, uh, you're at full what you really need at this moment in time? No. <laughs> oh, that never, that, that, I don't know, I wouldn't recognize that day if it fell down and Landed on my head. Uh, we have two people that are in the process of um, moving on from the serving staff right now. One is moving to a position in the housekeeping department. Uh, one is just moving to, um, she had to leave us because of conflict with school. Okay. Um, so you still have needs beyond what's right. been authorized. Um, only in the serving capacity at the moment. Okay. Um, the other positions I have authorization to get as much as as I need. Okay. So it's not not too bad if I. It's it's just frustrating because you would think, great, we can hire. You know, we have so many restaurants, so many places that have, you know either had to reduce staff or had to lay off staff or places that have closed. You'd think that. The hiring process would have been, you know, turn of a switch. But it seems even more difficult now than it was prior to COVID. It's Do you very, have a feeling or reason on that? Um, no, <laughs> I really don't. I mean, uh, three, four months ago, the reason I would have said is because people were getting the large unemployment checks and they're making more money to sit at home and collect government benefits instead of working. but those benefits have since expired, so now right. I'm just bewildered. They may get added back, it sounds like now. Yeah. Um, one other area on uh, your special meal, the steak night, uh, will it be different types of steak from time to time, or are they gonna be always filet mignon or whatever? I mean, I don't know. Right now I'm sticking with filet. 
Um, filet is, 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 is the closest thing I have to a silver bullet when serving beef. Um, something that's always frustrating to me, you know, in this type of capacity that I work in, there's so many times I'd like to have beef on the menu more, but beef is, that's a hard meat to use if you're trying to make friends. Um, even filet mignon, I've had people complain with the most tender of filet that they can't chew it. So uh, ribeye gets mixed reviews. You know, we have prime rib on the menu once a month. Uh, so people either swear by it or swear at it. Okay. It's, it's very hit or miss. Flank steak, yeah, which I think is always wonderful, is hit or miss. Mm -hmm. um, New York strip, you know, some people love it. A lot okay. of people hate it. Uh, so uh, fillet is the it's the it's my best it's my best hope for making the most amount of people happy. Okay, uh, one other area, and this is just again personal to me. I'm not a big uh, steak eater. I love steak, but I try not to eat too much of it. Uh, what about seafood? I know you offer salmon and and cod many nights, just regular nights. Uh, is there a fish that you might do as a special, such as grouper, or, and I can't name them, but is that ever thought of instead, or not instead of maybe doing a special seafood night, maybe more shrimp or right. something like that? No, I think that's a great idea. And uh, I, will, I will explore how to do that. Right. Yeah, and of course it's, it's so fickle because we have, if I do that, it will be a fresh fish. It'll mm -hmm. be something that has to be seasonal. So it'll be a little bit difficult for me to plan too far in advance because I want to make sure gotcha. it's, you know, it's at a reasonable price and it's going to be the kind of quality that's going to bring you out. You know, because I know it's a long drive from Southwood Villas. <laughs> and if, you, if you're going to make that long drive, I want it to be worth well, your while. Exactly. Well, I'm coming tonight, so make sure it's a good night. Absolutely. Thank you, David. Great suggestion, though. Kathy, were you going to interject? Right. Yeah, so, so Kathy was saying that we've done the fisherman's platter uh, in response to trying to appeal to the seafood lovers instead of just the beef lovers. Now, and I was asking Kathy, is that like you'd have two or three different fish correct. on the platter? Correct. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. Okay. You. You're welcome. Appreciate the suggestion. Slowly he moves. The uh, three meal or three lunch program looks like you, your staff went through a quick learning curve and it went, it's now smooth. It looks great. Thank you. How are you as far as filling the dining room on a normal day with, with two servings? Are you at, at all pressured to go to three on an everyday type spaces? No. So we don't have that as a problem. No. There, because you're it, hoping that it, more people would explore explore that thing and and uh, you could have more permanent and diners. And I, you know, I can't stand here and say that, you know, we're always going to do this or always that, but. Uh, Doing the three seatings on Sunday, you know, was a was a great suggestion as it rolled off. You know, we could really think of no reason not to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm yeah, I'm glad it seems to be getting smoother each each week that we're doing it. So, and when you did the three seatings at lunch, did the dinner fall way off? You know, the total number of meals for the day has been pretty consistent. You know, now as it was previously. Hmm. So, yeah, it's a give and take. There's more people at lunch and then less people at dinner. Uh, same, roughly the same number of people for the day, though. Mm -hmm. So, it's, uh, if I wanted it to be a, a way to drive up total numbers, then I would say, no, it's not working. But it's, at least it's doing the job for the folks that, uh, that felt slighted if they couldn't make it for a Sunday lunch. Yeah, you know, we've worked. It's working out great for us personally, but then it looks and it, like I say, the crew there has really done well. Thank so you. We, it's a very, uh, it's, it's a pleasant, yeah, thing. And it, 
and the late the the second or the third seating really helps us search scores. Correct. Because before you had to race to get here for a twelve o'clock church yep. or for a for twelve o'clock seating. So that's that's some yeah. excellent move there. Thank you. And, and yeah, when when you're blessed with such great servers, it's a it's a pleasure. Okay then. Well, I thank you all for coming out. I hope you're careful when exiting that you don't get caught in the crowd. And, but uh, thank you again. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate you all very much. Oh yes, just in case uh, there's one person in this whole community that hasn't heard about Kathy being our, our legendary employee of the year. Yay! Thank you for reminding. <laughs> all righty. Well, thank you all.